Hello everyone, Rowan here from We Damage We, and we've got, I just did uh, yesterday, the A tag. Well, Jim has now newly, hotly, hot off the presses, released the B tag. So I thought, you know what, if I did the A tag, I might as well do them all. He said he's planning on trying to do one every week, uh, until he's through the whole alphabet, which is, I think, sounds like a f very fun idea. Um, so here's my take on the B tag. Question one: B is for B is for Buildings Roman. Uh, do you have a favorite Buildings Roman or coming of age story? Um, the the one that uh, I and I I feel like I talk about this book all the time, but it is one of my favorites. Uh, is the the instructions by Adam Levin, which is about a uh, eleven year old boy who uh, has been repeatedly he's Jewish. He's been repeatedly p kicked out of day school. Jewish day schools for his violence and messianic tendencies. He thinks that he may be the, the Jewish Messiah. And he's been placed in a public school where he is put into a program called The Cage, which is where all of the violent uh, and undisciplined children go. And uh, over the course of four days, we learn of him and his friends. Um, and in the end, there is a revolution, a violent revolution, and a miracle that takes place. That's all I'll say. It's uh, it's an amazing book. It's a humongous book. It's like a thousand pages long. But it's uh, probably the best book. Uh, it's my, fa my favorite book of the last 20 years, probably. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's my favorite Buildings Roman, for sure. Uh, two, B is for Beach. What would you recommend for a beach read? I'm not much of a reader of things that are called beach reads, but the thing that sprang to mind for me was The Secret History by Donna Tartt, which is a, a sort of a, a mystery book. It's a, at the beginning, a group of friends uh, commit a murder. They murder one of their friends, and then you go back in time and uh, f follow the events of the, the year or two years or so leading up to that murder to find out why they have committed this murder, why they have chosen to kill one of their friends. It is uh, so engrossing. Uh, you know, I read it feverishly when I read it, so that's why I thought of it as a beach read, is that it's 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 a very engrossing and book that you don't want to put down. Uh, you just need to know what happens next. So, yeah, I think that would be a great beach read. Maybe a non-traditional beach read, but yeah. Uh, number three, B is for best. What is the best book you have read this year so far? Um, it would either be The Seep by Chana Porter or Stoner by John Williams, um, which I just finished yesterday. Uh, I have made videos, standalone videos, about both of these uh, books. I will link those down in the description in case you are interested, but uh, to just give the brief briefest of plot synopses. The Seep is about uh, a near future where a alien entity called the Seep comes and sort of symbiotically integrates itself with human life and creates utopia for humans. But in the wake of that, it follows a character named Trina who uh, loses her wife uh, and sort of becomes this sort of cynical wreck at odds with the utopia of the world around her, uh, and then goes on a quest to try and sort of redeem herself, I guess. And then Stoner is about the life of a man named William Stoner, who uh, comes from humble beginnings as a son of a farm family uh, in the early 1910s. He goes to college for agriculture, but falls in love with English literature. Uh, gets his PhD, becomes a professor, and then has this sort of series of disappointing occurrences in his life. The book follows his entire life from birth to death, um, and he sort of struggles to have things go his way. But he is driven always by his passion for literature and his uh, sort of yearning for purpose, and it's a fantastic book. So both of those uh, highly recommended. B is for bookstore. Do you have a favorite bookstore? Um, I am blessed to live in the Twin Cities, uh, Minnesota, which has so many fantastic independent bookstores. Um, I'm going to talk about three that I think are... No, I'm going to talk about four 
that are <laughs> are my favorite. There's probably I think there's there's an event every every year um, where they put out like a map, and then you can get stamps from all of them going to them for um, Independent Bookstore Week day, but they do it for a, like a week, and then uh, you get coupons at the stores. So there's a ton. I think there's like 30 independent bookstores in the greater Twin Cities area. But so let's talk about four. First one, Majors and Quinn. I just went there today. I did a little mini vlog haul video that I'll be uploading later. Um, they have new and used books. Um, they are extremely well stocked and have all sorts of cool stuff that you won't find in other places. They have lots of cool rare books. Um, it, the sort of counterpart to that store in St. Paul is Midway Books, in my opinion. That's a, another fairly large store. It's two floors. Um, they also have comic books, um, like new comic books, every Monday. Um, they have like a section of like vintage pornography. They have uh, much more in the way of like vintage books. I have a friend who collects like um, pulp mysteries, and um, that's a great place to pick up stuff like that and um, antique books. They have a basement as well as the two floors, and the basement is all clearance. And they have this massive, uh, this massive, like, rows and rows and rows of clearance, and then, like, tons of clearance comic books that are, like, five for a dollar. Um, it's a very cool store. Uh, the next one that I thought of is, um, is Moon Palace Books. This is a bookstore that um, is in South Minneapolis. It's about... 500 feet from the the precinct that was burned down famously last summer uh, during the riots here in Minneapolis. Uh, it's, it is extremely close, like a stone's throw from it. Um, luckily, it was unharmed during the riots. Many buildings in that neighborhood were burned down. Um, but it is a bookstore that is sort of like a lefty, hip, I guess, bookstore. They f carry, it's all new. But they carry a lot of political books. Um, they carry a ton of fiction, science fiction. They have really cool, they have like handmade uh, knickknacks and stuff that you can buy. And in the back is a place called Geek Love Cafe that serves vegan pizza that's very delicious. Um, so that's a great place. I'm thinking of more bookstores as I'm talking about this. There's Mayday Books, which is a, a, a far-left political bookstore that's in a basement in the Cedar Riverside neighborhood that sells all, like, philosophy, political philosophy, and it's, like, all radical old hippie dudes that, that work there. Very cool store. Um, Bone Shaker Books is another politically leftist uh, bookstore that's... Uh, also, not in this. It's in the. It's in the sort of Seward neighborhood, which is adjacent to the Cedar Riverside neighborhood, and uh, also politically left. They have a great selection of fiction as well and curated books. Everybody who works there is very kind and very cool. Um, but the other one that I thought of that initially, that's like one of the big ones, is uh, Dreamhaven Books, which is a bookstore that specializes in science fiction, fantasy, and horror and comic books. Um, it is so. F for many years, Neil Gaiman uh, lived not in the Twin Cities, but in Wisconsin, just across the border, you know, half hour away. So, for all intents and purposes, the, the closest metro area that he lived to was the Twin Cities. He was uh, known for his association with Dreamhaven Books, and they stock tons of his stuff that's signed. Uh, but it's it's a great sort of labyrinthine store that has, you know, you can find back issues of Fangoria, or like vintage, more vintage pornography, which is always, I think is very cool, um, weird sort of smutty books from the, the 40s and 50s, um, you know, pri like, like private press, uh, horror stuff that you don't see very often, and then they have comic books, they have kids stuff, um, it, it's just, it runs the gamut of, of, of things. If you're into genre at all, you owe it to yourself, and you're in the cities, you owe it to yourself to stop there and, and see what they have to, to show. So yeah, that I just rambled way too long about bookstores, but there's so many great bookstores in the Twin Cities. Uh, B is for banned books. Is there any book that you think should be banned? Um, on principle, no. I don't think so. If I was going to 
gun to my head pick a book to ban, it wouldn't be Mein Kampf. It would be the Turner Diaries, um, which if you are blessed enough to not know about the Turner Diaries, I won't spoil your ears by telling you about it too much, other than to say that it was one of the main inspirations behind Timothy McVeigh's bombing of the Oklahoma trades, the Oklahoma City bombing of the government center uh, in the 90s. He wanted to sort of, in the style of the Turner Diaries, start a race war, a revolution. Um, yeah, so that, that book is a piece of shit. Uh, we got it in one time when I worked at Half Price and I read, I tried to read it just out of pure morbid curiosity and I got maybe 50 pages into it and I had to stop. Not even because of it was so objectionable, but because it was just terribly written. Uh, I just had no desire to, to force myself to continue reading it. B is for the Bible. What is your favorite book of the Bible and what trigger warnings do you think it should have? Um, I was not raised religiously so my entire sort of knowledge of the bible is either through pop culture or through the two semesters of religious studies that i had to take when i was in college because i went to a lutheran college so they forced you to take theology uh, it, it wasn't lutheran theology it was it was just theology so we read texts by all three of the major Abrahamic religions, as well as Eastern religions and things like that. So it was it wasn't a, it wasn't a miserable class. It was it was fine. But we did read the Bible uh, in in large sections for it. And my favorite book uh, is probably Revelations, just because I'm a dark and brooding, very uh, sad boy. So the end of the world is is appealing to me. And as far as trigger warnings for the Bible go, I mean Jesus, what isn't in the Bible. You've got rape, murder, incest, all sorts of stuff. Bible's fucked up. Uh, next, B is for bookshelf. Show me your bookshelves. Um, I'm going to cut away now through the magic of editing. So I don't have a proper bookshelf right now, but what I have done is sort of taken this shelf and turned it into a bookshelf, partially. All of this is stuff that I have not read, uh, or I am intending to reread, like these three right here. Um, it's kind of a mess. It's not organized in any way. Um, got William Gass, William Gaddis, Federacy of Dunces. I have read that. That is something else I've, I've thought of. I plan to reread because it's been so long since I read it. Cortazar. The Stephen King book I need to get rid of. I bought it thinking I was going to try reading Stephen King again, and I did, and it, it didn't go well. Women and Men, I picked that up uh, back when it was only worth like 20 bucks. Now it sells for like over 100. It's a pretty sweet deal that I got on that. Yeah, that's what the shelves look like. And we're back in the chair. Amazing. Final question. B is for Brazil. Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist has been translated into 70 languages. Have you read any Paulo Coelho? And if so, what do you think of his books? I must admit, I have never read any of Paulo Coelho's books. Uh, the Alchemist is one of those books that's so ubiquitous and popular that when I was younger... Um, in my, in my more formative years, I uh, I was sort of an iconoclast, and I uh, just avoided it because it was so popular. Um, and then it just I just never read it. Um, so I'm not opposed to Paulo Coelho. Um, I've heard, like Jim said in the original video, that that many of his books are terrible. But uh, I, I people love The Alchemist, and uh, maybe someday I'll read it. I don't know. So yeah, that's it for this uh, this tag. Um, again, as per usual, at this point, I'm I'm still uh, I'm still so new. I'm like a young baby of BookTube, so I will I will not tag anyone. But if you see this and you think it sounds like fun, uh, feel free to consider yourself tagged. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.